And Dylan Tate with the club now. What do you think he has to, to offer the bullpen? And what does Evan Phillips need to do now that he's back in Bowie? Yes, uh, we got Dylan here. We got a fresh arm that, that'll be ready to pitch tonight. Dylan or uh, Evan would have been uh, down for a couple days after throwing right around 40 pitches yesterday. So uh, Dylan's worked his way back after uh, taking the, in the contusion on his arm from the, from the line drive at the end of summer camp and, and has been throwing the ball well down in our secondary site. Like the way through the ball the second half last year and excited to have him. Uh, just talked about on the radio. I, you know, I really like Evan Phillips. I think Evan Phillips has got a, a chance to be a really good major league reliever. Uh, it's just a little bit, I think he's just hard on himself. A lot of times it fights himself on the mound because uh, he's throwing 95, 96 with a wipeout slider that I would love to see him throw more and just continue to gain confidence. And uh, you know, hopefully he'll be back up here soon. Rich Dubroff, go ahead. Brandon, we were talking to Sean Armstrong earlier about the uh, load that the bullpen has been carrying. Do you think that the number of innings that they've been working is sustainable? Uh, do you have to get more innings out of your starters? Well, I think as the starters continue to build, I think that that's going to be very, very helpful. Um, you know, they only had a two and a half to three week spring training. I think we were comfortable where we were to start, but I'd love to see those guys build up a little bit more and, and start going a little bit deeper into games. Um, you know, we also added like Tom Eshelman here as a long guy that's, 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 that's going to help us also and somebody that can uh, pick up some innings for us out of the, out of the bullpen. Um, you know, Jorge Lopez did that yesterday with, with some big innings behind, behind Meansy. So, yeah, I'd love to slow some of the some of the workload down for some of those guys because I do know that, that we've been relying on them heavily. That's why Dylan Tate's here also. Uh, this is somebody that that will be available tonight. Uh, but yeah, they're, they, they're, those, all those guys have done an amazing job, and they're staying ready. And they continue to come into my office and to say they're available tonight. I got to slow it down a little bit with some of these guys. Dan Connolly, go ahead. Brandon, how much of a concern is that with the starting rotation? It's more of a veteran group, you know, four of the guys are 31 or older. Um, are you concerned about not being able to get to the sixth inning, uh, you know, routinely with those guys? I'm not concerned about it. I think that I think we will. I think we face good lineups too. And it's tough with some of these lineups third time through. Uh, so you really got to keep your pitch count down and you know, we're, we've been playing a lot of really close games and so a lot of times you you go to your bullpen early because you like the matchup better. Uh, it'd be nice to have a 7-1 lead in the fourth or the fifth to let the guy go after a couple of innings. We just haven't had that. So I think it's uh, kind of the nature of the games we've been playing, as well as these guys not having a normal spring training ramp up or build up. Um, but yeah, hopefully we can start going a little bit deeper uh, as a starting, starting staff. Steve Molesky, go ahead. Brandon, in addition to his offensive improvement, some of the metrics say Santander has made defensive improvement, maybe vast defensive improvement. Does what your eyes tell you from summer camp and the season lead you to the same? And where has that come from? Uh, I think that he was a good defender, especially in right field and left field last year. Last year, I played him in three spots. So that probably, I think help, it's helpful to have him just play in that one spot this year. You know, he played a lot of center field last year. He's not he never played center field before, and he wasn't prepared for that, really. He just, and I asked him if he, if he wanted to do it, if he could do it, he said yes, and we needed a center fielder. We just didn't have one. Uh, so for him to be able to do that last year and do a nice job in center field, too, uh, not hurt us out there in center. Uh, that was impressive. But, yeah, just kind of settling into right field. Uh, he's been, a, he's done a really, I, I thought he was a good defender last year, and as he's getting more experience and more innings defensively, he's just going to continue to improve. But I always like the way he threw. Uh, I like his athleticism out there. He's made some really nice plays in, the, in, a, in some tough right field corners, a couple in Boston, a couple here. So uh, I've been impressed with his defense. Just a reminder, if you have a question, you can go ahead and enter your name in the chat. Richard Justice, go ahead. Hey, Brandon, I wanted to ask you about the kind of three things. One, how your guys had bought in what impact do you think having success will have on them? 
And do you think there's something extra about guys who've been told you're not good enough in other places, those three things, just the way you play? Yeah, we, I think for sure the, on the third thing and that is that our guys have, um, you know, we have a lot of guys that have come here from other places and um, been taken off 40 man rosters. And that's a tough pill to swallow for, for a major league player is when the team does remove you from the roster and now you got to start all over and hopefully get claimed and team gives you an opportunity. So I think that our guys have a lot of our lineup and a lot of our bullpen that's happened to. And, and I think that they, it makes them tough too. I think that they're, uh, I think we grew a lot. I think a lot of these guys grew a lot last year, going through a lot of different experiences um, where we, you know, we struggled at times. But we did do some good things also. We just we had a tough time closing games out. We had a tough time keeping the score tight. Uh, second half of the games a lot of times. But our guys, I felt like, especially the second half, we did compete to win. And we did do some nice nice things offensively. Uh, with some guys having some good a good second half. And I think they rolled that into this year. And, yeah, I think that, you know, winning does help. Um, you know, you do have to learn to win here. And it really starts with your – you're pitching. I mean, your bullpen guys keeping you, keeping the score there and, and uh, being able to give your offense a chance. Like last night, for example, last night, our bullpen kept the score at five to one and we, you know, caught up to Max Scherzer. That doesn't happen very often. Most teams, when you're down five to one to Max Scherzer, that's you can just, you can just chalk up an L. Um, but give our guys credit for keeping the score there pitching out of a lot of jams, a lot of bases loaded. They left a ton of guys on base. We did a nice job pitching out of jams. And then our offense, we, we hit a couple of homers and we're right back there. So uh, happy with how our guys have played. I think, we have, I think we have some tough guys in that room that have dealt with a lot of experiences and just like to see it continue. John Mioli, go ahead. Brandon, you've <clears throat> spent a little bit of time around Alex Cobb now, now that he's healthy and seeing him pitching the way that he wants to. When we talk about the starters, you know, trying to get deep into games, he's had, you know, a very high level of success in his career. What does it mean to him just being around him to be pitching the way that he is and, and contributing with all the pressure he's put in, on himself to be healthy and, and be this guy for you guys? Give him a lot of credit for coming back after, after being hurt all year last year and looking at as sharp as how he's looked so far. It's just a credit to all the work that he's put in. Uh, you know, last year, missed an entire year, uh, dealt with a lot of things and, and has come out throwing the ball great so far this year. So, you know, I saw, I've, I remember seeing Alex Cobb in Tampa seven or eight years ago where it was mid nineties with a really nice, nasty split. And it was a really tough, I mean, a tough time against them. Um, and now he's a mature 93 with a curveball split. Um, but the main thing for him is maintaining health. And I know that he's, he's enjoying being on this club. I think that's a huge part too, is that he likes the guys around him. I think he really likes the team. And, uh, so it's my main goal is to really keep him healthy over the next six weeks because he's a big part of our rotation. All right. Last call for questions. Joe Treza, go ahead. Hey, Brandon, how is Jose Iglesias feeling? I, I think it was two nights ago, you, you can kind of see him like physically wincing yeah. throughout the game and, and, and then he didn't play yesterday, so. Yeah, pretty sore the last couple couple days. And so I was trying to stay away from him even yesterday. I didn't want to, I didn't want to uh, pinch hit him and didn't want to play him. Uh, just because, you know, Iggy's a huge, it's huge for us um, to keep, to try to get this guy healthy. And um, he feels a lot better today than he did yesterday, which is a positive sign. And, and yeah, I'm just going to continue to monitor him, talk to him every day, try to conserve playing time for him and, and manage, manage the quad as, as best as possibly can. Quick follow-up question from John Mioli. John, go ahead. Brandon, I think it was last week you kind of said that this is something you're going to be managing probably through the end of September. Is, is there going to be a point that – just 10 days of resting it might be worth it for the next however many weeks versus two days in, two days out, three days in, two days out? 
It, yeah, that's a that's a possibility. The problem is he's getting on base 50% of the time. So um, it's a good problem and a bad problem to have. No, I just yeah, we're gonna we're gonna consider everything. I think we're gonna see how he feels tomorrow. Also, I'm just gonna continue to check in with him every day. Just, just in my office a little while ago, saying how much it felt, how much better it felt than yesterday. Uh, so yeah, it's gonna continue to we're just gonna continue to talk to him and play it day to day.